The kinematics equations can only be used to describe the motion of a single object. So when you have two objects that are moving simultaneously and you somehow know something about their motions and how they relate, you, you can't put all of the information into just a single equation. You're going to need to write two equations, one for each object, and then algebraically find a way to connect them. Let's take a look at some of the strategies that we'll uh, use and then we'll look at an example. With these sorts of questions that involve two simultaneous motions, uh, you should plan on starting with this equation, the x equals x sub o plus v sub o t plus one half a t squared, or you know something similar to it based on, on what notation you like to use. Um, because the, uh, the two equations then for your two objects will both start with the same basic formula, um, it's going to be important to use a common set of uh, coordinate axes for all of your objects. So you want to make sure that you choose an origin and stay consistent with that origin, meaning that the, the um, oops, meaning that the uh, x sub o term in the equation might be different for your two objects. So if it's a race and a runner starts 10 meters ahead of another runner, then x sub o would be 10 for one for the first runner and then just zero maybe for the second runner. So that's important to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is that there is a positive and negative direction uh, for your axes. And if you, um, if you maybe have an object that is moving to the right and a second object that is moving to the left, you can't put their, their v sub o values or maybe even their acceleration values in uh, using the same uh, positive or negative signs. Um, if, if one object starts going to the right and the other one starts going to the left, then their v sub o's have to have the opposite sign. Same thing is true with their accelerations. Uh, those might have to have um, one be positive, one be negative. So pay attention to that as you are setting up the equations. Maybe sketch a situation um, so that you can visualize the directions um, that the various objects are moving. You may also want to organize the uh, information into like a, 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 a table or a set of information uh, so that you can really keep straight which numbers go with object one and which objects go with object number two. Again, that's, that's more of a, of a, um, a personal choice. Um, you, can, you can decide as you work what will work best for you. But it is vital that you set up a system of equations, two separate equations based on uh, a common formula um, where you plug in values for each object separately and then algebraically combine those together. Let's take a look at an example. Of course, feel free to stop the video and write down the problem if you would like to have it in your notes. Um, I'm gonna start by creating a graph to represent what's going on here. So we have a traffic light that turns green and at that exact moment, an automobile is starting up. So if I take a look at the position of the automobile, um, it's gonna start at this, this origin here. They're both gonna start actually at the same position. And the auto has no speed to begin with, so my slope will be zero, but then it speeds up, and so we have that acceleration graph that we've talked about in class. On the other hand, the truck um, moves at a constant speed the whole time. And so it would have some sort of initial slope and then it would stay with that same slope the whole time. Not sure if that looks straight, but um, it should be. Okay, so our truck has a constant, uh, constant speed. So what we are interested in is the time when the automobile, which is behind, um, catches up to the truck. Okay, so right here, this is the time that we are interested in. Okay, and if we find that time, that moment, then we can also find the position of both the automobile and the truck. And that would be the answer to our first question. How far uh, beyond the traffic signal does the automobile overtake the truck? Some people are 
um, you know, will look at this and they'll say, oh, well, can't I look at velocity values instead? Let's take a quick look at the velocity graph and we'll see why this doesn't work. So the automobile has a consistently increasing velocity and the truck has a consistent velocity. And so if we were to look at maybe where these two lines cross, this point here, this means absolutely nothing. Okay, this point here does not tell us when the automobile uh, passes the truck because the, tr the uh, auto has traveled uh, a distance equal to this area and the truck has traveled a distance equal to this area. So at this moment, the automobile is still behind. It hasn't traveled the same distance. So, so in, in summary here, do not use this graph, okay? Uh, stick with the position versus time graph and therefore the position versus time equation. All right, so here's our basic kinematics equation that we're gonna work from. And we're gonna write two equations here so for the automobile, um, so A sub auto, okay, the initial position. Well, these two objects start at the same position. So you can call them both 10 or 57 or 2.3, or you can just call it zero, okay? The, the key thing here is it doesn't matter as long as you use the same value. So let's go ahead and, and set that equal to zero. For the auto, there is no initial velocity um, there's only an acceleration from that starting moment. So we would say one half times the uh, acceleration of 2.2 times t squared. Okay, I'm just coming up with a general statement of the automobile's position. Same thing now for the truck. So for the truck, again, initial position is zero. The initial velocity is 9.5 and it stays 9.5. Okay, it's just a constant velocity. There is no acceleration value or A is zero. And so these would represent my two different uh, equations and I would set them equal to each other at this particular moment. I'm trying to find when the auto passes the truck. So um, that means 1.1 T squared is equal to 9.5 T. Okay, and there's actually two, uh, two uh, solutions to this. One is that t could be zero. That would make this a true statement. Okay, but that doesn't really tell me much. That's, that's just referring to this initial uh, moment uh, when they were both at the green light. So that's not really what I'm looking for here. What I wanna do is to divide through by t and then to say that 1.1t is equal to 9.5. And so, the magic happens when the time is 8.64 seconds. All right, so now I'm ready to answer my question. Uh, how far beyond the traffic signal does the automobile uh, overtake the truck? So I can just plug that T value into either one of the equations. Let's go ahead and use the automobile here. So 1.1 times 8.64 squared. And so after 82 meters of motion, um, they would be lined up again, and then the, the automobile would be ahead. So that's my first answer. And then for the second one, I need to know how fast the uh, car is traveling at this moment. You could pull up a new um, kinematics equation, or you could just take the derivative of this, um, of this expression that you found. So the dx dt, uh, of 1.1t um, squared of, of this here uh, would be 2.2t. And so when I plug in my time, 8.64, this comes out to be 19 seconds. Okay, so again, recap, key things. We needed to make sure we wrote two separate equations. Okay, don't try to put all the information into just a single equation two separate equations, one for the automobile, one for the truck. And in this case, uh, we are looking for when they are at the same position at the same time. So you set those two equations equal to each other. It's a very common um, method for this style of, of problem.